Welcome back. This is Retirement News Online. So for decades, bonds have offered a kind of fallout shelter for jittery investors in uncertain times. Uh, this year, falling interest rates have made the bond market less attractive. Uh, joining us is radio show host and the chief investment officer at Bulwark Capital Management in Seattle, Washington, Zach Abraham. Zach, thanks again for talking with us. So what's your take short term and long term right now in the bond markets? I think, I think first and foremost, we need to separate out the bond conversation uh, and we need to separate out you know, all other kinds of bonds and treasuries. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people are making is, is looking at these things in, in a synonymous fashion. You know, let's, let's talk about bonds uh, and, oh, by, you know, and, and the first part of that being what do you think about treasuries. I, I think that, um, that, that treasuries will probably continue uh, to play the role that they always have and, and play the classic bond role, which is, you know, when, when risks get elevated and markets get hit, I think treasuries will still continue to catch a bid. So I think they'll do their job. Uh, most importantly, um, if you're looking at the yield complex across, the, across all markets and internationally in the world, you know, there's a couple things that we want to consider. First of all, treasury is the only bond that's being sold in the, reserve, in the world's reserve currency. So, you know, whether you like it or not, you have to have dollars. You have to have access to them. It's the world's reserve currency. If you're a bank in Singapore, you need dollars. So, you know, I think that that relationship will hold up. The, the other aspect of why we think that will hold up is, ironically, if you look around at the rest of the world, U.S. treasuries, the U.S. government bond market, is one of the very few out there that's still paying an actual yield. So you're not having to pay to owe somebody else's debt, which, which is what negative interest rates are. So I, I, I think treasuries uh, on that basis will be fine, and, and they'll probably continue to behave the way that they always have. Where, where we see the big issue is in everything outside of treasuries. First of all, if you look at corporates, uh, something that a lot of people know about is that we have $17 trillion worth of sovereign debt, so sovereign bonds issued by governments around the world trading in negative territory, which is insane. But the crazier thing is, is now we have over a trillion dollars worth of corporate bonds trading in negative territory. We're funding these corporations, these private entities, we're funding their debt, and we're paying them for the privilege of carrying their debt. And where we see a big issue is we think the divergence in every recession or in every market issue, for the most part, you see a dynamic happen, which is what we refer to as spreads blowing out. So the difference in values between corporate bonds and government bonds blows out. So, so you might see U.S. Treasuries because people are panicked, they buy them, yields on U.S. Treasuries go down. At the same time, yields on corporates go up because people think that default risk for those corporations has gone up, and therefore you'll see them all of a sudden that, that, that relationship that holds the entire bond complex together, it, it blows apart. So I, I think that that will happen, uh, and I just think it's going to happen in a more drastic fashion because you know, we, live in a, we live in an experimental world. Right? You've got governments doing things with, with balance sheets and rates that we've never done before. You've got quantitative easing. You've got all these different things. And those governments can control, for the most part, for now, they can control the yield on their debt. What they don't control is the yield on corporate debt. And so we think that the biggest risk by far is everything outside of government U.S. treasuries. And, you know, here's the other aspect of it, and I don't think anybody's looking at it, which is the, the, the classic relationship between, you know, especially stocks and bonds has changed. They're not moving inversely. They're moving together. Look at this year as a perfect example. Last year, S&P was down. Average bond fund was down somewhere between 4 to 5%. This year, market's up. Quickest, best, you know, quote, unquote, best start to a year since 1997. And bonds have rallied right alongside with stocks. And if you're out there sitting on a, quote, unquote, diversified mix of bonds, which is going to include some sovereign bonds, which is going to include corporates, which is going to include high yield, you know, I think there's a very, very high level of certainty that that bond portfolio is going to cause you serious issues and at the very least is not going to do the job you expect it to do. And then keep in mind, all of that being said, it's not like these things are paying us a good premium to take on that risk. 
uh, you know, we continue to see one of the biggest issues is people incorrectly believing they're diversified by owning bonds when what we see with bonds is they are, they are, they, you know, they are showing or they are, you know, putting forth similar risk that equity markets are. And, and that's not new. That's, that's been going on for 10 years now. So, again, we just think that people are diversified incorrectly and, and there isn't risk management going on. It's just this blind allocation to a model that has supposedly worked, yet it hasn't worked for the last 10 years. And on a completely different topic, what effect do you think the turmoil in Washington, specifically the impeachment inquiry, will have on equity markets? I, I think the biggest danger involving this whole process is that I, from, from our estimation, if we are really agnostic to what's going on and we just keep our eyes on the data, which is something that we really try to do, I, I think the biggest risk here is that all of this stuff is not being seen correctly in context. Unlike a lot of guys out there, I and our firm does not believe that the quote-unquote Trump uh, impeachment poses a huge risk to the market. Um, I think, first of all, a lot of people don't understand what impeachment is. Uh, impeachment is a far cry from actually having a president removed from office. So there's that. I think it's getting, you know, and surprise, surprise, right? Something that's got a little bit of drama to it is getting played up in our 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 uh, you know, our culture. I mean, I think that's kind of par for the course. Um, I think the biggest issue is, again, not reading, reading the data correctly. You know, if we look at this market, it is very clear uh, that the global economy is slowing. I think that anybody that is looking at data and, you know, doing the research, I don't think anybody can argue that. Um, now, you might get people that shout back, well, wait a second, look at 3.5% unemployment, but I think there's something really important, important to point out here. Unemployment is one of the biggest lagging economic indicators, and you know we don't have enough time to get into it, but once you understand the way that employment numbers are, are uh, uh, looked at and calculated, and you'll, you'll understand that typically they're about 18 months behind. So if you, for instance, there's a lot of times where you'll see empo employment numbers in the past stay positive and look good. Uh, right up until the point that uh, an economy is actually in recession. So it, it's a horrible forecasting tool, and it's usually the last thing to roll over. Um, so if you look at the global economy, the global economy is slowing. Uh, another misconception is that it's slowing due to the quote-unquote trade war. Uh, China was slowing materially a good 18 months before the first tariff was put into place. And people go, well, that's just China. Well, China is also the second largest economy in the world. So the, the trend was well in place. Um, and the U.S. is, to this point, held up better than anybody else. Um, but to us, the material issue is, you know, everybody's looking at Trump as the big risk and all that other kind of stuff. We sit there and go, look, Trump may accelerate the issues. You know, an impeachment for Trump, is it going to be good for the market? I think that's a very hard argument to make. Um, but to us, it's the setting, right? It's the fact that we have a very fragile system. And what I mean by that is, you know, never before have we gone into a recession where the Federal Reserve didn't have at least 500 basis points to cut uh, uh, of interest rates. Today, they've got 1.75% that they could cut before they get to zero. You've got a record level of corporate debt, corporate debt built up. Corporate bond market is twice as large as it was in 2007, and it's at even lower credit quality. So we, you know, we think right out of the gate, that's a much bigger risk. Um, and I think, like I said, I don't, it's not that I'm saying that the Trump issue won't impact it, but I look at the Trump issue or the Trump impeachment as possibly being the straw that breaks the camel's back. I think that's the real threat that it presents because we're up against it. And then you get into valuations of equity markets, the fact that it's the longest, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's the longest expansion in the history of the economy, it's the longest bull market in the history of the economy. And, um, you know, of course, and I think it's just common sense that, you know, every day you go down this path, the, the you know, the, the, the reaction or the event or the, the magnitude of an event that it would take to throw this thing off, off track you know, it becomes smaller and smaller, meaning that, you know, a smaller and smaller disruption could be the thing that tips us over. So I'm not saying we don't think it's important. I just think that everybody's looking at it as the main thing, and they're not seeing the forest for the trees that, hey, guys, even without this issue, things are still headed in the wrong direction. And um, we just don't think people are paying enough attention to that. 
And, you know, that's always the case at the height of markets. People are going to be looking at the upside and they're going to be minimizing the downside. They're not going to be focused on risk management. And we think that's the big issue, because if it's not the Trump impeachment, this cycle is going to end. Something's going to end it. Could it be the Trump impeachment? Sure. But what it takes to end this is getting smaller and smaller, and, and it's somewhat inevitable. That's Zach Abraham in Seattle, Washington, and this is Retirement News Online. Thanks for watching.